my name is Walter Ageno. Uh, I work in uh, uh, Varese, the University of Insubria. Dr. Walter Ageno has published several papers on thrombosis in blood, including a recent one that appears in the second edition of the How I Treat Compendium. Thrombosis is a very uh, important disorder. Uh, it's, uh, it's a common disease, unfortunately, and it affects a very broad population. The area I covered, splanctin vein thrombosis, really needed some focus because many doctors face this, this disease, they treat these patients, but always struggle with the uncertainty on how to treat these patients. They are very challenging for two reasons. Uh, the first being that being less recent, we do have much less evidence from clinical studies. And the second reason why these are challenging is that they have uh, different onsets, uh, so the diagnosis is not so immediate sometimes, uh, and uh, the outcomes can be different. Uh, one interesting thing about in, uh, splanctin vein thrombosis is that there are two major risk factors that explain almost half of all events, and uh, one is liver cirrhosis. And the other main risk factor is cancer. Abdominal cancer is associated with splanctin vein thrombosis. The third leading cause of this disease are uh, myoproliferative neoplasms, and in particular the JAK2 mutation. So there is a great interest among hematologists in this disease. When I diagnose splanctin vein thrombosis, then there is a real uh, challenge. First of all, I have a clot to treat, so the first thing I need to consider is the administration of anticoagulants. However, uh, many of these patients carry a, a substantial bleeding risk, so my treatment decision must be balanced against this risk. In most patients, the treatment is really the same as for patients with deep vein thrombosis of the lower limbs and pulmonary embolism, which include parenteral treatment with heparin, low with heparin or unfractionated heparin, and if possible then oral anticoagulant treatment. The challenge comes with these other patients. What we do in patients with solid cancer, we only administer low with heparin. This is also mutuated from studies carried out in patients with uh, thrombosis in the lower limbs where low with heparin was shown to be more effective than vitamin K antagonists over the first three to six months. So in patients with cancer and splanctin vein thrombosis, we prefer to use low with heparin. Uh, in patients with cirrhosis, um, it's even more difficult. Uh, we tend to prefer heparins in, uh, in the first period of treatment because of the shorter half-life as compared to the vitamin K antagonists. And since these patients are a high risk of bleeding, having a, sh a drug with a shorter half-life uh, is probably uh, more cautious. And then there are other things that you have to consider. And in this sense, this, uh, this disease really requires a good networking with other specialists, in particular, of course, gastroenterologists, because the patients with cirrhosis needs to immediately undergo also uh, as of gastroscopy to screen for viruses and to treat the viruses. So it's a very challenging uh, condition. And unfortunately, there are no zero randomized controlled trials to tell us what is best. So we're really relying on uh, observational studies and on information that comes from other settings. There is great interest in the uh, newer uh, direct oral anticoagulants also for the treatment of patients with planktonic vein thrombosis. We need to learn more, but certainly this is a great opportunity for our patients with planktonic vein thrombosis. Our study, with the addition of other studies, may uh, result in some uh, additional information that may require an update, maybe in the future of this article. Copies of the How I Treat Compendium, second edition, are available online at hematology.org slash 2015 How I Treat or by calling these numbers.